Hi guys, my name is Tom and in this video I'm going to talk about the Roadcaster Pro 2. Uh, I'm going to talk about all these features and sort of comparing it a little bit to the original Roadcaster Pro. In case you've never used or never heard of the original Roadcaster Pro, uh, it was basically a tool designed for mixing and recording uh, podcasts. But over time, uh, a lot of its users started adapting it for other things because it did have so many capabilities. Well, with the Roadcaster Pro 2, Rode kind of went in and redesigned it because they wanted to make it so that it's multi-use, not just for podcasts. So what can the Roadcaster Pro 2 be used for? Well, like I said, obviously for podcasts, uh, but also for uh, live streaming. So for example, if you're streaming, uh, you know, doing a YouTube stream or maybe you're a gamer and you're streaming and you want to be able to fine tune and have total control over your audio, uh, it can also be used for a music production, so you can actually record different tracks, let's say vocals, instruments uh, on this, and it can also be used for sound recording. So if you're, for example, working in like a smaller studio where you're doing, uh, let's say, like an indie video project or film project, and you want to be able to record different sound effects and then mix them. Now, what the Roadcaster Pro 2 is not really well designed for, at least in my opinion, is for on-location sound recording. Uh, or, for example, if you're doing live uh, events, let's say, you know, a music festival or something like that, it can still be used for those two, uh, you know, the scenarios, but I would say it's just not uh, well suited for that uh, and it has some limitations. So I think in those cases, you might be better off getting some other tools. Now, when it comes to the, the main features of the Roadcaster Pro 2, uh, the biggest one probably is that it's, a, it's an audio interface, meaning you can plug it into a computer uh, and it will basically act as your sound card, but obviously it does more, a lot more than just be able to play sound. So you obviously have multiple inputs, so you can plug in microphones, you can plug in instruments, uh, line-ins, all that stuff. Uh, you can mix the sound, process it all w within here, and then you can output it back to your computer or actually multiple computers because there's multiple ports out. Um, so that's, I would say, uh, is the main biggest sort of a selling feature of this. The Roadcaster Pro 2 is also a really good multi-track recorder. Uh, obviously, you can record just in stereo if you want, but if you're doing multi-track recording, then again, you can record internally, uh, whether it's on the SD card or, uh, for example, like right now, I have an SSD plugged in through one of the USB-C ports. Uh, or you can record, obviously, to a computer if you have that plugged in. Uh, this is also a really amazing digital audio processor. So. Uh, for example, like right now on channel one, I have this microphone. By the way, all of the audio in this video is recorded through this mic uh, and through uh, the Roadcaster Pro 2. So, for example, if I were to click here, the settings, it's, uh, you can choose, for example, your microphone presets. It comes with already with a lot of presets. So I have my Procaster microphone plugged in. Um, and, you know, you can easily kind of scroll through here. You can choose whichever microphone that supports a lot of microphones. Plus, you can obviously put any other microphone and you can adjust the settings. Um, uh, right now I'm processing the audio and I I'm just using one of their presets for broadcast. Uh, but if I wanted to, I could, for example, turn that off. So right now I don't have any processing on there. Now it's back on. Uh, and again, uh, for example, I can adjust different settings here. So uh, I have the sparkle, for example, things like that. I can punch it up. So right now I'm going to load in this preset. Uh, and then aside from just being able to process the audio, uh, like I said, you can go to advanced here and you'll have all of these things, for example, like a high pass filter, a compressor, things like that. Uh, so I, obviously, like I said, you can do all of those things. Uh, you see an equalizer. Uh, and by the way, you can control all of these settings here on the touch screen or uh, when you plug this into a computer, you can also adjust it there. And once you like your settings, you can save all of these as presets. So if you have, let's say, different scenarios that you're using this in, uh, you can just load up that preset and, you know, all your settings are back. Uh, so you have that. Uh, there is panning now, left and right, which is something that the original Rocaster Pro was missing. So you have that. Uh, like I said, you have a lot of cool things. But aside from that, you also have effects. So there's some effects like echo, uh, for example, and I can turn that no, on. No, 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 no. And here's, here's my, my echo. echo. <laughs> And it turn it off. And you can adjust all of these, by the way. You, this central nap here will allow you to kind of adjust these settings. You have that, but also uh, you have, for example, certain effects that you can also add to your uh, pads here. And, uh, for example, you can have things like... Now, these are some of these presets, by the way, I'm going to show you. But you can create your own, basically, audio processing uh, presets. So, right now, it's a voice disguiser. <laughs> uh -huh. 
I sound very freaky there. Uh, this one's very funny. <laughs> This is like, uh, hello, I'm one of the chipmunks. <laughs> so that's one. Next one. is a megaphone. You guys can hear me through a megaphone. There's a monster, a robot, things like that. So this is a monster. I sound very scary. And a robot. And uh, this is another robot. I come from another planet. So yeah, you can do stuff like that, obviously, and uh, and like I said, it's it's kind of cool that it's all built in there. So it's a really really powerful uh, audio processing uh, device. The Rodecaster Pro Two is also a really good digital mixer, just like the original Rodecaster Pro, uh, and uh, you know you can obviously use this again for different recording mixing situations. Let's say if you're doing live streaming and you want to have uh, full control of your uh, audio right there at your fingertips. The Rodecaster Pro 2 also has uh, sound pads, and you can use these to, for example, trigger the different audio processing effects like I just showed you. Uh, or, for example, you can use it to, to trigger, uh, let's say, different sound effects. Like here I have applause. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so you can do that. Or, uh, for example, if you're doing, again, like maybe a live streaming event and you want to have your, your music track in the background, and maybe like an intro music track, you, you can have that in there again. And by the way, if you're ever looking for a specific music track or sound effects, maybe you want to put it on one of these pads here, uh, then I can highly recommend Epidemic Sounds. It's what I use on all of my pretty much live streaming events or uh, film productions, video productions. And just so happens that Epidemic Sound is the sponsor of today's video, not Rode. Rode did not, by the way, send me this or pay me to do this review, so it's fully honest opinion. But Epidemic Sound uh, made it possible for me to spend the time to do this review. So if you guys are ever looking for high quality music tracks or sound effects, then uh, check out Epidemic Sound. They have over 35,000 uh, music tracks and over 90,000 uh, of sound effects and they're constantly adding to that library every week. And it doesn't matter whether you're an online content creator uh, or for example doing videos for clients because their personal uh, plan will cover you for all of your personal type of videos uh, or stuff for social media, YouTube, TikTok, uh, whatever, Twitch. While the commercial plan covers your freelancing projects or commercial productions uh, for your business. One of the coolest features about Epidemic Sound is actually their online tools that allow you to really quickly narrow down, kind of filter and search for just the perfect type of, let's say, sound effect or music track which means that uh, you spend less time browsing online looking for that uh, piece of music and more time actually editing. And I don't know about you, but I know me in the past, I used to sometimes spend hours actually more time looking for the piece of uh, music than the actual editing took time. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why I like using Epidemic Sound. So if you guys want to check them out, then click the link in the description. You'll get 30 days uh, free trial. Uh, also use my discount code if you want to get 50% off uh, their personal plan when you're paying annually. Anyways, let's get back to this video. The Rodecaster Pro 2 is also a MIDI controller. Uh, what does that mean? Well, it means that basically you can use, for example, these pad buttons or some of these other buttons here uh, to trigger different MIDI commands. So if you're working in a music production software that, for example, has MIDI controls, then you can use that to trigger different instruments. Or, for example, if you're using something like OBS Studio, uh, you can set up different scenes that, again, you'll be able to trigger or switch between using some of these buttons here on the Rodecaster Pro 2. This device is also a really good uh, headphone amplifier. Uh, so I have right now one of these headphones plugged in here uh, on channel one. And like I said, you can you can individually adjust all of these and you can obviously you know, adjust the settings here uh, if you want to kind of play around with it. There's different presets for headphones. Uh, by the way, you can change the colors of these. You can, by the way, change colors of all of these things. Uh, so, for example, here, if you know, right now it's kind of this purplish color. If I wanted to, I can go and let's say, I don't know, make it uh, blue is my favorite color. So let's make it blue. So you can see now the color of that changes, and you can color code this way uh, your whole Rodecaster Pro 2. Now, when it comes to build quality uh, and overall design, uh, it is actually a little bit smaller than the original Rodecaster Pro, uh, but the, the touch screen is a little bit larger. The touch screen, by the way, is, is phenomenal, responsive, you know, easy to control and change all the settings. And actually, in case you didn't know, this is basically kind of like a mini computer running inside of this, uh, and it's running on Linux machine. Uh, so that means that, uh, like, because of the hardware and, and the capabilities of this hardware are much, much bigger than the original Rodecaster Pro, that means that with this one, they can add even more updates. There's been already quite a few former updates, but that just means that in the future, they're not going to be as limited with the hardware as they were with the original Rodecaster Pro. 
Um, so it's really good and exciting in that sense. And otherwise, like I said, build quality is is, uh, is nice. It feels solid. Uh, then the faders are very smooth, very professional feeling. Uh, and so are the, all the buttons and everything. There's nothing that really feels cheap. Everything is responsive and uh, makes you know using this thing uh, a joy. Now, uh, here in the back, you, you have your four main inputs, and uh, they can be used for both to accept XLR plugs or, for example, instruments. So you can plug in a guitar or things like that, or the XLR microphones I have, and in this case, uh, or you can also accept line inputs. Uh, so if you have, let's say, another mixer or things like that that you want to plug in here, you can do that. Uh, right next to that, you have the line out. So you have your one or two or left and right channels. So if you want to plug it into your monitors. Uh, then after that, you have your headphone inputs. Uh, so in this case, I just have one headphone plugin, but you can plug in up to four different headphones. Uh, and then after that, you have uh, USB-C connections. There's actually three USB-C connections in the back because one is just the main, main one that powers the whole device. Uh, so that means you can use, obviously, the, the provided uh, AC adapter uh, to USB-C, but you can also use um, different uh, power banks or, you know, like all those portable batteries uh, that as long as they provide enough power through the USB-C, you can use that to power this if you're, let's say, on location and you can't plug in. Uh, the other two USB ports are actually uh, multi-use. So, for example, you can uh, have one plug-in, let's say, to a computer, uh, and I have this as an uh, audio interface on your computer, while the other USB-C could be plugged into a smartphone. So you can uh, play music, or stream music of a cell phone, or maybe take a phone call. Now, uh, you don't really need to do it that way because you can actually connect your smartphone uh, via Bluetooth. Just like the original one, there is Bluetooth, but now the, uh, the new sort of update they added is that the Bluetooth is not just coming in, but you can actually send out Bluetooth. So let's say if you wanted to connect this to actual Bluetooth speakers, for example, while you know maybe you're doing a little party at home or whatever and want to use this as a uh, as a mixer there. Well, you can do that over Bluetooth. Um, and then, uh, like I said, you can also connect uh, different combinations there. Like, for example, right now uh, on my one of the USB ports here, I have a SSD plugged in and I'm actually recording to that SSD. So you could be doing that while another one's going to computer or you can plug in two computers if you want. So let's see if you're, I don't know, streaming, you know, gameplays. Uh, you can be, for example, gaming on one computer and you want to have the audio coming in from that while the other computer is used for streaming and you have chats there or whatever it is that's happening and you want to be able to mix the sound from those two computers. Again, you can do that. There's a lot of possibilities, a lot more than obviously than what I'm mentioning right now here. Also on the back here, you have an Ethernet port in case you wanted to plug it to the Internet. Uh, but uh, you can also do that actually using the Wi-Fi, which is what I'm doing right now. So you can... Uh, get the latest, for example, uh, over-the-air uh, updates, uh, you know, whenever they come out. And then right at the end there, you have your power button, and it does feel a little kind of weird and squishy, but I guess that's a good thing because it means you're not going to accidentally bump it and turn off your device while you're in the middle of recording, for example. Now here on the top, you have, uh, like I said, you have your faders, you have six physical ones, uh, three virtual ones, uh, and that actually means that you, you can go up here, and, and the cool thing about the Rollcaster Pro 2 is that you can easily swap and, for example, rearrange them. So if you have certain channels that you actually do want to have them on, you know, this fader or this physical fader, while some other ones, maybe less important ones, you want to put on the virtual ones, well, you can do all of that and very easily just kind of swap them around. Uh, you also have your basically mute or solo buttons up here. Uh, so you, you can use that. And then also you have another button here above each fader that allows you to, again, adjust the settings, your audio processing, all of that stuff, all your presets, on that particular channel. The sound pod buttons are here. I already talked about them, but again, they're just you know nicely designed, very responsive. And now the nice addition is that uh, unlike the original Rollcaster Pro, they added these two buttons now so you can switch be between the different banks. So let's say, see this first one, I have different music and sound effects, while the second one, I have the different audio processing effects. And now up here in the top right corner, you have your four uh, headphone uh, levels so again it's just simple knobs and like I mentioned you can adjust the colors of all of these uh, and then right below that you have the master control and with this for example as I turn it you'll notice here on the screen that uh, adjusts the level of the, the main output to your monitors uh, but you, go, you can also use this to to change some of the other settings so for example if I were to go here uh, let's say adjust the echo so I can, for example, go different settings, and as you can see, I can adjust, uh, you know, here the low-cut filter, the delay, things like that with this. And by pressing it, because it also is a button for pressing, 
You can also adjust, you know, this way you can kind of jump in from one setting to the next. So it's nice that they made this uh, knob slash button uh, multi-use. So you can use it for different things. And again, as more, for more updates come out, I'm sure there's going to be more uses for this. Uh, also on the bottom of the Rodecaster Pro 2, there's a mounting thread. So if you put, want to put it on a stand or actually a VESA mount. So if you want to, let's say, attach it to one of those monitor arms, so you can be able to to have it and easily kind of push it out of the way, bring it in, let's see if you're working in like a small studio. So it's a really nice addition, something I wish they had on the original Rodecaster Pro. Now this whole device, what I like about it is that it's designed for audio professionals who, for example, let's say if you know a lot about sound and sound processing and you want to be able to have full total control uh, over every aspect of your sound, then you can obviously do that. You, you know, you can go into, like I said, to all these settings here and uh, you can really kind of play around with all these, uh, you know, parameters that are there. But at the same time, if you know nothing about audio, uh, but you just want your audio to sound good, then what I like is the fact that they have all of these presets that just make it really, really easy. So, uh, for example, here I'll turn off the audio, the advanced audio processing, and then you see here uh, they have these three simple parameters, which is the depth, sparkle, and punch. And again, you can use the master knob here to adjust these. And with that, you can very fast kind of adjust your audio processing and, and see how, it's, how it sounds without really having to know any of the, the stuff that's happening kind of there in the background with all these settings. So, you know, that's really nice. And then obviously as you're growing and you start learning more and more about uh, your audio processing and audio mixing, then this device, again, will just slowly give you more and more control. So again, it's designed very well for both professionals and beginners. Another thing that some of you might be excited about is the even lower noise floor. Uh, even though personally, I thought the original Rodecaster Pro was pretty good, <laughs> but I guess some people thought, you know, it could be improved upon and Rode has done it. So it, it is even cleaner this time. Now, is it worth the, the price tag? So right now at the time of me making this video, it's around $700. Uh, for all the latest prices, as always, check the links in the description. But um, yeah, I mean, I think it's really worth it because, uh, first of all, I, I don't think you could ever before find a device that had so many different uses and so much capabilities in one, in one basically device. But also, if if you know if you were to get the different devices to be able to do everything that the Rodecaster Pro 2 can, it would cost you like literally thousands of dollars. So, for, so I think the cost is is, is still worth it. Now, is it worth, for example, upgrading to if you own the original Rodecaster Pro, which is the case with me? Well, I'll tell you this. I borrowed this one just so I can do the review. And, you know, I kind of already read over the specs and I thought to myself, you know, it's really cool. It's got new features. Maybe if I was buying it brand new, maybe I would just spend a little bit extra and buy this one instead of the original one. But uh, I thought, well, I'm not going to be upgrading, right? Um, but to be honest now, after having this for the last few weeks, I, I kind of, you know, I don't want to give it back. Let's just put it that way. So I'm actually now really considering buying this one. And I don't know whether I'm going to keep my older one or resell it or, you know, maybe still use it in another setting or something. I'll, I'll figure that one out because, like I said, it does provide you a lot more functionality. The Like things, for example, like I said, because it's a, it's a more powerful uh, device uh, hardware-wise. So... For example, when you're doing things like transferring the files from the Rodecaster Pro 2 to the computer, it's a lot faster now comparing it to the first one. Uh, like I said, it just has a lot of other things, you know, more processing, those cool sound effects and things like that. Uh, it really just makes it that much better. So I think personally, I'm actually going to end up buying it. So if you're wondering, I guess my own review convinced me to, to buy it, even though I have the original one. But I would also say this, if you have the original one, and it does everything that you need. Like, let's say if you're just doing podcasts and it's that one's designed amazingly well for podcasts and you've never run into an issue where you're like, oh man, you know, I wish I had this functionality that the road broadcast, you know, the, the version two has, then I would say just stick with the original one. Like just because something new comes out doesn't mean that the older version is not good anymore. But I guess that's going to come down to each and one of you. Uh, and you're going to have to make that decision on your own. So in conclusion, I think the Rodecaster Pro 2 is, is a really great device if you're looking for an audio interface, audio recorder, or mixer, uh, or a processor. Uh, like I said, I can highly recommend it, uh, just like I did with the original one, but I think this one just has that many more improvements. Uh, and like I was saying, it's, it's a great device for both beginners uh, who know nothing about sound, but just want to be able to record good quality sound. Uh, but also for audio professionals or, uh, as for example, as you're growing and you learn more about audio and you want more control. So, again, the Rodecaster Pro 2 is really good. 
Uh, and as soon as I'm uh, done returning this one and, and I get my own, uh, I'm definitely going to be doing following up videos, kind of showing you guys all of the cool things that you can do because I, I just couldn't fit it into this video because it would be a few hours long. Uh, but also as Road releases new former updates and new features, uh, then I'm definitely going to be doing videos kind of showcasing that. So stay tuned for that. Uh, once again, my name is Tom and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.